you play a bad build, you have to play at least one. I mean, we all play something that's kind of bad, right? Or at least it's thought of as bad. But I want to kind of talk about bad builds in this video. Bad builds, good builds, what makes them good, what makes them bad, what are maybe people a little wrong about when it comes to builds inside of Pokemon Unite? Let's get into it here in this video about builds. Yeehaw. So I want to briefly touch on held items. I want to talk about boost emblems. I want to talk about moves. I want to talk about everything, everywhere, all at once. The movie. And I want to talk about builds. That was a great movie, by the way. Let's, but let's keep this one focused to builds. So let's talk about what's looked at as a good build. What's looked at as a bad build. Let's talk about what matters and why maybe we're wrong about some of these things. And let's see if I can remember that I want to talk about those four things. Cause I doubt it. Hey little pinky. So I was thinking where to start. And I think held items are a reasonable place to start this conversation because there are some things in here that I think it's hard to argue that they're pretty dang bad, at least compared to others. And then there are things that I think are much more shady shades of gray and things that are obviously very good. Let's talk about why that happens. Bringing you over to the score section right here, I want to talk about a moment in time inside of Pokemon Unite. You know, when I first started playing this game, I rarely saw anyone run any of the stacking items inside Pokemon Unite. And there are reasons for that. There are other items that are amazing, like Buddy Barrier was unbelievably broken at the start of this game. But in general, I think people just didn't realize how valuable something like this could be, me included. But at some point, even even I, you know, developed my own stack counter. That's a stack. And people started playing stacking items over time, realizing how valuable they were. A similar thing happened with this guy right here, Shell Bell. Shell Bell at one point was just considered to be absolute garbage, but people started to recognize that the cooldown was pretty beneficial. Boost emblems also came into play, which increased the amount of cooldown. So people leaned into this to make more cooldown heavy builds. Then there are a few weird items like Drain Crown, Drain Crown really has never found its spot inside of Pokemon Unite. Same thing with Rocky Helmet and Leftovers. Rocky Helmet for reasons that are just a little complex. It just doesn't work the way you think it does. And then Leftovers because it just doesn't benefit you enough out of combat. But you know, in this video, I might even defend Leftovers a little bit. I, I kind of doubt it but we'll see. The tricky thing is in Pokemon Unite, it doesn't tell you enough all the time to decide exactly how an item works. You would think, oh, leftovers, that's good in the mainline games. That sounds like it's pretty good, the ability to heal. And then you get to use it inside the game and you realize, oh, it's actually not giving me enough of a benefit here. Or an item like Rocky Helmet just doesn't work the way you intend it. An item like Muscle Band doesn't actually give you your attack speed because it's based on a weird formula of when you reach a certain threshold, then you actually attack faster. Part of it is the game just being unnecessarily secretive with a lot of their information. Another thing happens, of course, where people are playing something that just doesn't work. Wise Glasses on Charizard, they think that part of Charizard's kit is special attack. I understand why they think that if they're coming from a mainline Pokemon game, but you would hope that they would learn pretty quickly that is not the case. So before I get any further, let's answer some of those questions I talked about earlier. What matters when you're looking for a build? Well, I think one of the biggest things that matters is what you're actually trying to do with this Pokemon and how you are going to take advantage of said item. All of these items, for the most part, are decent on the correct build and with the correct play style, which I think is really, really important to notice. Let's say you're running an item like Floatstone. Floatstone's a pretty decent item for a lot of attacker Pokemon. It gives you 24 attack, 150 base move speed, and also additional move speed when you are out of combat. It's pretty solid and you can set up some pretty good situations with it. Pokemon like Decidueye with Spirit Shackle, Talonflame with Fly, and a lot of other attackers actually take decent advantage of this item, but you need to play with a float stone with the understanding that you are using this item and you know how you are using it to your advantage. For instance, with Talonflame. When Talonflame uses Fly, before it lands on an enemy, it can still take advantage of the additional out of combat move speed bonus of a float stone, allowing you to land some flies that enemies do not expect you will be able to land, which is massive. It does a huge amount of damage. Or let's talk about an item like Assault Vest, an item that I would say is not the best item inside of Pokemon Unite, but if you know that you're a very tanky Pokemon and you are going to focus on making sure that your Assault Vest is up when you go to engage an enemy Pokemon and you use it to fight special attackers, well, 
at least you are taking this item and you are using it very effectively for its purpose. I agree that it's not the best choice of an item, but you know how it works. In fact, Buddy Barrier is the same way. If you know how Buddy Barrier works and you use it inside of big fights to save allies and protect them when you're a very tanky Pokemon, that's a really, really good item. If you just throw it on Cinderace and you're a mile away from your allies and you kick your flaming soccer ball at them, well, then you're not really making good use of your Buddy Barrier. Experience share is is another amazing example. If you know how to use this item, you can run it on every single supporter, every single defender, and get massive value out of it. But if you're not really sure how this works or you're not using it to your advantage in your play style, then maybe it really isn't the most beneficial item. You know, I was playing Umbreon the other day. <laughs> I was playing Umbreon the other day. And I was running Leftovers, Aos Cookie, and I think a Focus Band on the Snarl build. And of course, Leftovers over is super cheesy, but there is some synergy in what Umbreon is doing. Let's take a look at Leftovers really quick. Leftovers gives you 360 HP, some base HP recovery, and then out of combat HP recovery. Umbreon has built in out of combat HP recovery when you unlock its Unite move, that's part of its passive. Also, Snarl bases its shield strength off of your max HP, which is why I have the Aos cookie and I have the Leftovers. Is it super ideal? No, you would be better off with a buddy barrier, maybe even a score shield, something like that could do some good work, but it's not insane. It really isn't. I, I'm not saying there aren't better options, but I'm saying as long as you know what this item is doing, how it benefits you directly, and you're making your decisions based off that, then it really isn't that bad. And do we need every build to be the most optimal build all the time? I don't think so, especially if you know what you're doing play style wise. For instance, let me talk to you once again about a Pokemon I love, Talonflame. A build I love to run for Talonflame is black brown when it comes to emblems. We're jumping into emblems for a, a minute here because I think emblems also highlight the differences in play style. So if you look at this build right here, I'm not getting as much attack as I would out of a six brown build, but I'm focusing on cooldown reduction for Talonflame specifically so that when I land my fly on my enemies, I can set up quicker combos with my moves. With this build right here, I get more attack, I get more HP. It's probably all around a better build for this Pokemon, but it is a playstyle difference. With Talonflame, I love the cooldown build. I also love it with Pokemon like Urshifu and things like that. I think there are some very, very good options for these Pokemon that might be slightly outside of what we would consider the best build. For instance, let's take a look at the build I love running on my mages right now. This is seven black, six green, but it's a little different from what you'd normally see. We're not getting as much HP as we would. We're not getting a boost to special attack. What we are getting is a huge move speed increase, a base move speed of 238 with our seven green, six black. So I know that for my play style, I'm taking advantage of a little extra move speed in exchange for a little damage. If you know that's how you're playing and you take advantage of it, then I think it's a totally reasonable build. The same can be said for this build right here. Seven yellow, four white. I know it's pretty troll. You can go five yellow, six white, whatever. I get that it's a trollish build, but if you know what you're doing with this and you recognize that you're taking advantage with of in combat and out of combat move speed, yes, you don't get as much HP as you would on a real tanky bruiser build, which is also really amazing right here. 380 extra HP, six white. This build, tankier for combat. The other build, you are more mobile and easier to get back and forth to your allies. I know that one is looked at as so much better than the other, but depending on your play style, you can absolutely play a build with seven yellow emblems. So to sort of summarize that thought right there, I think what matters is understanding what your play style is with a certain build and playing to that build's strengths. Now, if you just throw some random stuff on there and you don't use it and you don't actually take advantage of certain emblems or certain items, then that is when I would consider a build bad, or at least not very optimal because you're not taking advantage of what it does so 
well. So now let's talk about what is a straight up bad build. I think a bad build is something that really doesn't synergize with your Pokemon at all, and there isn't really a playstyle argument for it. So if you can't find a way to actually get this to provide any value, that's when I would say it's kind of entering the realm of a bad build. This is something like seeing an EXP share on your jungle Pokemon, or of course seeing an item that really doesn't help you at all, you know, an attack based item on a special attack or etc something like that in general though i would say if you understand your build strengths and you know how you're going to use it at least it will provide you some value now if you just throw a score shield onto a gardevoir and you never try to score yeah that's pretty dang bad but at least if you know what you're doing, if you understand that you have this item and you know how you're gonna make plays with it, don't back cap it, Ray. Do not do it, Gardevoir. I know you have a score shield. No, Gardevoir, where? Why are you going? No! But at least if you understand how this build is set up, then I think the build is at least okay. And as I've said in a previous video, I don't think your build is the most important thing inside the game. I know we like to feel that way because it's exciting to have a shiny new toy and I love playing around with builds, but the decisions you make in a match matter so much more. And that kind of brings us to what matters in all this. I think the biggest thing that matters is understanding what your build does and what you're trying to achieve. For instance, let's take a look at this build right here. Admittedly, this is not the best build inside of Pokemon Unite. It's pretty cheap. Cheesy. It's five pink, five gray, two blue, two purple. There are builds that are more optimal without question math wise, but let's talk about what this build is doing and how you would play it to take advantage of it. First off, it gives you a little HP. It gives you a little attack and a little defense as well as special defense. You lose movement speed and you and you gain a little critical hit. Pretty irrelevant right here on the critical hit front. So when I lose 140 move speed, I have to know that either I'm going to be slower, so I need to figure out a way to engage with my enemies, or I need to take an item like EXP share or float stone or something like that to make up for the move speed that I am losing. Now let's take a look at what our colors do. Pink emblems decrease the amount of hindrance effect duration on you. So basically stuns, knock up slows, and things like that are reduced by 8%. Then we have gray, which reduces the amount of damage we receive from an individual tick of damage by six every time. And then we have blue and purple defense and special defense respectively. In general, this build is pretty cheesy and you could argue that it's definitely not optimal. But as long as I know that I need a little extra move speed to get into combat, and as long as I know that this is going to help me a little bit with hindrances and help me take a little less damage, I'm probably running this on a tank-like Pokemon. This is exactly what I would run on possibly, I don't know, a Wigglytuff. I could move it around a little bit for the special attack, but you get the idea. I'm up in the mix fighting the enemy. They hinder me for less time. I take a little less damage on every single tick, and you can see a realm in which you play this build. Is it pretty cheesy? Yes. Is it pretty mid? Maybe even a little less than mid. But my point remains, you just have to understand what you are playing and why you are doing what you are doing. A good example of this being bad is if you throw this on Cinderace. This doesn't really combo with Cinderace at all. And that kind of leans into what I was talking about earlier. Why are you doing this? What are you doing? How does this actually synergize? Are you putting this on Bullet Seed Greedon? Okay, I could see a realm where something like that might work. Are you putting this on Greninja? Okay, that seems pretty bad. Even when it comes to your battle items, if you understand what it is doing and how you are using it, there are very few items that are just impossible to play with, impossible to win with. Without question, there are those that are better. Eject button, X speed, there are a few Pokemon with potion that all work pretty well. Fluffy tail, slow smoke, goal getter are usually the lower tier items. And then full heal, amazing for a Pokemon that's in the mix and needs to make sure that they don't get stunned. But if you know what you're doing with goal getter and you have a plan to make use of this item, it is not the most troll thing in the game even though it feels like sometimes the most troll thing in the game. Maybe Fluffy Tail, but still. 
What is the point of all this? The point is if you know what your build does and you take advantage of it specifically, if you know how to use it in combat, whether that's using cooldown reduction on Delphox, so you're playing energy amp and you're playing shell bell, or whether that is having a score shield and a goal getter on your wiggly tough, I think there are options for these builds to make sense. And I would rather have a player on my team that has a slightly unusual build that knows how it works as opposed to someone who's rocking the best build but doesn't know what they're doing inside of a match with it and doesn't understand why it is viable i think that's important what is the why behind what you're doing if you can answer that question if you can figure out why am i doing this inside of a match of pokemon unite why am i using this build i think it will help you a ton thanks for watching thanks for listening i love you very much Play all the bad builds you want, you silly gooses. Mm -hmm. Don't play EXP share on Greninja.